What is going on, everybody? Thank you all so much for tuning in to another episode of the MCSE Politics Podcast with me, your host, Nico House. Um, I hope that this is not your first time listening, but if it is, then welcome. Uh, we we get a little bit deeper here. We, get, we, we, we go in, you know, because obviously in the videos, you want to try to fit in as much as humanly possible in a very short amount of time as to not lose attention. But my assumption is that if most of you are listening to this, then you are probably, uh, you know, on the road, cooking dinner, or who, who knows, maybe you just like listening to me. That'd be nice. But um, I definitely want to welcome you all. Uh, as, as consistent as I would like to be, it's been very hard for me because... It's well, you all know I'm start, I started a network, so we're, the infrastructure is still being built, the relationships and the network is still being created. Um, the you know, obviously, there's a lot that goes into it uh, traveling, fundraising, things like that. Uh, good things, but uh, usually I, I used to do my podcast daily, but uh, it's been like every other day. I've been pretty, pretty good with it thus far, and I hope to continue that. Um, Today I want to talk about a misconception. Uh, actually, it's it's almost like as if it's a plea to the right um, and the left too, definitely. But specifically the right, only because of the rhetoric that's being used. The idea, what you believe, communism is, like what you've been taught to believe, communism is is actually not correct. You have to remember that, uh, and hear me out, I'm not saying that you're stupid, I'm not saying that you're ignorant, I'm, this is not just a misconception that the right has, but the left as well. But you have to remember that when communism, the, the Red Scare started, people always associated with the Cold War. Oh no, people, the Red Scare has been around since the 40s, maybe even a little before that. The Red Scare was one of the primary tactics used to make sure that George Wallace did not see the final term in FDR's uh, tenure while he was president of the United States. And it was also uh, used to try to prevent him from ever taking the oath of office for the vice presidency. understand the, the 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 communism quote unquote that you are familiar with is through the eyes of your fathers and your mothers and the forefathers of your fathers and your mothers which we all know at this point were subject to propaganda for imperialist purposes now, some people may probably are probably wondering why I'm even talking about this. Well, recently, of course, we all know that the, the the Syrian conflict has escalated, and the only reason that this conflict, along with others in recent past and even a little, the the distant past, have been able to escalate, is because of well, sheer ignorance and misunderstanding by pitting, pitting us against each other, by convincing us that someone on the other side of the world is our enemy, understanding that it's very difficult for us to communicate with them, or at least it was. That is what is allowed this conflict in Syria, the conflict in Iraq, Afghanistan, etc. Those, that's, that's what allowed these things to take place. Misconceptions. So when I say that you're wrong about communism, I'm not saying that your fears of what you believe communism is aren't legitimate. What I'm saying is that you're, you're misdirected and you're misguided. You're misdirected and you're misguided. What do you always say? Communism and liberalism. A lot of you all say it's a disease. Well, conservatism is right up there with that. 
not actual conservatism, believe it or not. Like those Massachusetts conservatives, you know, out here giving health care and all that good stuff. What's up with that? <laughs> but it's not what you think it is. What do you believe communism is? Right? What do you believe it is? When you think of communism, right, you think of silencing dissent. You think of propaganda. You think of taking the means of production and giving control of that means of production to the state. You think of authoritarian rule, oftentimes based in some type of religious proclamation. You think of quote unquote Russia, for some of you, some of you think of Assad, you know, some of you think of Hugo Chavez. But believe it or not, you're wrong. And like I said, I'm not saying that in an insulting way. It's, it's just, this is a, a common thought, a common school of thought that even people on the moderate left had. As in, yeah, I, I don't mind, you know, some social programs, but hey, Fidel Castro's bad. Look at what he did in Cuba. Because this is what we learn in school. There's a reason that you only learn about like, well, Ho Chi Minh, Fidel Castro, and then, oh man, I can't remember the leader of Vietnam, but like you, you learn about those three, and that's pretty much it. But you know why you never learn about North Korea outside of the fact that we were fighting with them? I mean, because they actually had, at the time, a world record economy. Yeah, it's, this is a fact. They were breaking records because of how fast. Their GDP was growing by like 40% a year after we ravaged their country. But like I said, you think of all these, all these, you know, pretty much at this point, they just become inherent in when you're talking about communism with the right. Now, I want you to think about something. Most of, what, are the, what does the right tend to say? They say, we don't trust CNN. I don't trust them either. You don't trust MSNBC. I don't trust them either. You don't trust New York Times. I don't trust those guys either. I don't trust Fox News and hell, a lot of you on the right don't trust them either. You don't trust the papers. You don't trust the news you watch. And why is that? Because it's propaganda. Well, you don't trust Hollywood either, right? You don't trust Hollywood either. For good reason, because there are a lot of there's a lot of propaganda in Hollywood as well. The federal government has been paying for propaganda in Hollywood for some time now. This is you know available to anybody who who wants to Google it. So you don't trust them either. You don't trust the CIA. For good reason. They're the ones who are establishing a lot of the coups and the propaganda. They're the ones who created a lot of the problems that we have. So you don't trust them. Now you can't trust the FBI. All right. And hell, at this point, I would assume that many of you act in CIA to the KGB, maybe. <laughs> but we can even take it a level deeper. We can take it a level deeper. You want to try collecting rainwater outside of your own house? I wouldn't recommend it. You might end up in jail. <laughs> you 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 want to you want to try to install solar panels depending on what state that you're in. You want to try installing solar panels on your house? I wouldn't recommend it. You may end up with a harsh harsh fine. You want to try having a large garden? So that you can grow your own food, so that you can take care of yourself. I wouldn't try it because you might end up in jail again. Not, not that you plan on selling anything. You just want to have it grow your own food. Wouldn't try it. The people have had and they end up in jail. <laughs> We have a police state where if you question at all, 
if you at all think to question police authority, then, you know, you're a thug and a terrorist. Mm, that's kind of weird because I remember how they, they portrayed Soviet Russia with the KGB. It was, they were portrayed in the same light. They were portrayed, you know, if, if you, it's, it's a good thing for you to snitch on your, your neighbors. You're doing a service to your country. You, you are taught to accept authority blindly and never question. Mind you, people. Well, for one, that's called a fallacy of authority, if you want to get in academic terms. Or fallacy of the appeal to authority, as in you shouldn't question just because they are authority. But these are fallible human beings. Oftentimes, people who came from war, who are suffering from PTSD... Or maybe they didn't come from more PTSD. Oftentimes, they may have come from uh, a background that is not too, too friendly to other races, to put it lightly. A background that's got a little history with some, some like I said, racism. I don't know why people think racism died. It makes no logical sense. Like people saying, oh, we want, we, I shouldn't feel guilty for what my ancestors did. I'm not asking you to feel guilty for what your ancestors did, but I'm asking you to recognize that it hasn't disappeared, and I'm asking you to recognize the effects. If your racist grandfather was a judge, you think that the sun just, especially if you're living in certain parts of the South, you think the sun just stops being racist? The, the, the daughter stops being racist? No. Just like you have religion and that ideology passed on to you despite the constant contradictions like people pick and choose what to follow in Christianity. Think about it. How can you be racist but be a, a quote-unquote devout Christian being, being Christ-like? You're supposed to help the people that need you the most, the people that you feel may not deserve it. And yet, those are the same ones who end up being hyper religious and racist at the same time and there's actually a strong correlation with what that means going forward and there's a reason that that divide and that that religion is constantly thrown out there by the way that's also a common quality of communism that you all have come to understand but I'm not sure if you understand how it's been implemented in your own lives So, you, you don't want to question authority. You think that we should just respect police because they have a blue badge on. Where do you think the Blue Lives Matter thing came from? And all of a sudden, Black Lives Matter is being uh, uh, um, talked about as a terrorist organization. I've worked with some Black Lives, at the, uh, Black Lives Matter people at the local level, and they're, they're not terrorists. I've known them for damn near, some of them, 15 years. I'm not saying that people can't fund certain sects of the organization, to, to, but they haven't, Black Lives Matter hasn't harmed anybody. But I will tell you this, according to Herbert Hoover, Martin Luther King was potentially a, a, a treasonous communist traitor just because he was part of the Black Liberation Movement. So think of all those commonalities. Everything that we, we, we say, everything that is said to be hated about communism, we are, we are experiencing and have been experiencing in America. And guess where it started from? It started from the right. The first CIA director was hyper conservative. Harry Truman, yes, was quote unquote a Democrat, he was a Democrat from Kansas City, Missouri, and his number one advisor was one of the most staunch Republicans you will ever meet. His entire, well not whole, his whole staff, but most of his administration was conservative. 
You look into the Eisenhower, obviously, in the McCarthy era. The spying, all that good stuff, came from conservatives. The same ones who say, we have to protect you from communism, start spying on you. The same ones who say, capitalism and free market is the way, starts initiating all these trade agreements, controlling the means of production, not only here, but in other countries as well. Think about that. Like I said, you can't grow your garden. If you're in a state like Florida or anywhere in the South, really, they say they love deregulation, right? Because these are conservatives. So this, I'm trying to help you understand the contrast here from what they, what what the elite say they don't like versus what they do. The most highly regulated states are conservative. Proportionally, some of the most highest tax states are conservatively dominant. I'm not going to pretend like corruption is unique to conservative states because when you have a huge economy, sometimes it's easier to mask corruption. For example, there's a, a, a large amount of corruption in New York on both sides, but it's easy to mask it because of the, the, uh, the economy and the day-to-day -day struggle of being a New Yorker. But the type of corruption is different. The deceptive nature of the corruption is different because they play the conservatives in Alabama they play on your ideology they want you to believe in false authority <clears throat> and tell you it's like when you believe in God they tell you what blind faith is what it's called and I'm a spiritual person I really am I'm a very spiritual person but I'm not religious I'm a spiritual person not because of blind faith but because of what I see around me because of my interactions with people and because I question that's why I become spiritual. But when they tell you, don't question me, just do as I say, not as I do, that's something that you directly translate and correlate into your life because your quote unquote father is telling you to do that. Why do you think they hide chapters of the Bible? That's a different discussion, but so you believe in authority, right? You don't question it. You don't question a lot of you all, just the, some Bible thumpers out there. Never question Thump. Think he's chosen by God. Never question Trump. How do you get, how do you figure that he's quote unquote chosen by God with everything that he, he's been re responsible for doing, including flying on Jeffrey Epstein's little Lolita Express? Trump is a man, just like Bill Clinton was a man, just like Obama was a man. He wasn't chosen by God. But those are the type of things, like be, when they want you to not question authority, that's the things that they'll say. You know what's funny about that? What do they say about uh, Kim Jong-un in North Korea? They follow him blindly as well, pretty much using the same rhetoric. Now, you all believe that Venezuela, um, Cuba, and the countries that we've instituted regime changes in, coincidentally, you all truly believe that those are quote unquote communist nations in the way that you view communism. That communism and democracy are antithetical to each other. And I'm here to tell you that you've been fed a pack full of lies. I want to give you one example. Now, obviously, there have been plenty of leaders in Iran, but this is actually the first leader of, like, the new Iran, the modern, I guess you would consider a modern-day-ish Iran. Mehdi Barzargan, Barzar, Bar, Bazargan. <laughs> he was an Iranian scholar, academic, longtime pro-democracy activist, and head of Iran's interim government, 
making him Iran's first prime minister after the Iranian Revolution in 1979. He quote unquote resigned his position as prime minister in 1979 in protest uh, at the U.S. embassy takeover and as acknowledge or as, and as acknowledgement of his government's failure in preventing it. That is not exactly true. He was kidnapped and his allies were killed by rebels that we paid and we ensued with propaganda. In case you didn't know. So this guy was a capitalist. He wanted to nationalize Iran's government very much how you all don't mind. Well, you know, wanted to see more or less globalism. He was a victim of U.S. sponsored regime change, but that doesn't sound capitalist to me. In fact, he took out the authority. He was part of the, the removal of the authoritarian rule. Hmm. In matter of fact, if I recall, He was one of the first Democrat. I think he was absolutely the first democratically elected official in the uh, in the new Iran. Yeah, that didn't sound very communist to me. I want you to. By the way, hated racism. One of those guys hated. Did did not like racism. Was trying to take the country more secular. He's one of those kind of guys. Um, give me a second. Ooh, actually. I think it was somebody else from Iran as well who was dethroned by America. Both by Americans. We're gonna figure out I think there was somebody else where this happened as well. Nineteen fifty three, I believe it was. Mohammed Mosad Mosade. That's actually the guy I was trying to refer to. Same similar background. Same thing. Um that's the that's the guy's name. It was nineteen fifty three. It's Mohammed Mosad uh, Mosade. Um listen, people. Nineteen fifty three Iranian Kudik Kudik taught known in Iran as the twenty eighth Mordad Kudik Tat uh, was the overthrow of a democratically elected prime minister and he was actually democratically elected in favor of strengthening the monarchical rule of Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. Orchestrated by the United United Kingdom under their name Operation Boot and the United States under the name TPA Jax Project or Operation Ajax. It's kind of weird that Al Jazeera keeps calling himself Ajax. I don't think that's a good thing. But anyway, um, Mossadegh had, uh, he sought to audit the documents of the Anglo-Iranian Oil Company, a British corporation now, oh, funny enough, now part of BP and to limit the company's control over Iranian petroleum reserves. Upon the refusal of uh, the AIOC to cooperate with the Iranian government, the parliament voted to nationalize Iran's oil industry. Like I was explaining earlier, 
and to expel foreign corporate representatives from the country. Boom. Then, worldwide boycott comes, insurgency, rebels that we fund, propaganda, monarchy, hyper, hyper religious, that's what it's replaced with, hyper religious monarchy that we put into power. All right, so I'm gonna give you another example. Maurice, Maurice Rupert Bishop was a Grenadian politician and leader of the New Jewel Movement, popular efforts in the areas of socioeconomic development, education, and black liberation. He came to power on the 13th of March, 1979, in the revolution that removed Sir Eric Gary from office, who was a British pawn. Uh, Bishop headed the People's Revolutionary Government of Granada from 79 to 83, when he was dismissed from his post and shot during the coup by, quote unquote, Bernard, a staunch Bernard Card, Cord, a staunch militaristic element in the government leading to upheaval. Now, like I said, Bishop was an, was an interesting guy because he led a revolution against the authoritarian government and immediately the U.S. went back to dethrone him. Some of you may recognize the term Granada or the country Granada from the famous painting of Granada. Now let's see who they replaced him with. Winston Bernard Cord. He's born in Victoria. And then he, oh, come on. There's no way. They said that he was part of the quote unquote new jewel movement, but that is just simply not true. <laughs> he wasn't true. They just co opted the name. But, like I said, as usual, they painted the, the guy who was all for capitalism, all for free market, for socioeconomic justice education and black liberation that guy he was a communist and we had to overthrow him and, Im and implement a super uh, super authoritarian government now this is the same thing that happened to Fidel Castro as many of you know I've talked about this time and time again on my show same situation with Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro, anti-segregation, as in he was for the desegregation that we had not yet implemented. He fought by, by, side by side with Nelson Mandela when the United States fought on the other side of that apartheid. Fidel Castro was probably only successful in his revolution because the United States owned 80% of the resources in Cuba, but that's part of the history that they don't want to talk about. Fidel Castro tried to offer compensation. This is verifiable. He tried to offer compensation because he understood the situation that they had been put in, but instead they, the white rich politicians and elitists from Cuba came to Miami, which is why the Cubans you see here are primarily white. Why do you think the government gave reparations to Cubans and still have, and they gave them to Cubans, they've given them to uh, Israel, but they claim for US, or excuse me, they claim for black people, mm, nah, can't give y'all that, we don't, we don't know how to keep track of you. We're only 12% of the population, people. It ain't that hard to find us, but I digress. So we, paint this image of him as if he was seizing the means of production from the people but it actually was the opposite the United States control 80% of the resources which means he was actually seizing the means of production and giving it back to the people Cuba has a 99% liter literacy rate they cured lung cancer 
They're one of the top producing medical schools in the country. I mean, in the world, excuse me. People fight to get into Cuba's medical school. This is, this is, why do you think the, Cuba was a, was a, was a problem for the U.S. Because they were the first ones who openly opposed them and had a, a large platform. And we couldn't have that because other people may be inspired to fight back. I will say this, though. It's crazy. We never attack people who culturally identify with us and who look like the majority of our population at the time, which was white, Anglo, you know, Judeo-Christian-esque Americans, Abrahamic backgrounds. We never attack those people. We only attack those who don't speak the same language as us. And it's crazy because when you think about the inherent racism in a lot of our presidents, very openly racist. Uh, Truman. God, I don't want to go over what he was used to say. He's hyper. He's super offensive. Truman, Eisenhower, Herbert Hoover, um, Nixon, of course, Reagan, Bill Clinton. Like, notice how we only go after countries where people don't look like us or talk like us, because that's how we. That's how we don't value them. There's a lot of hubris that goes in with these invasions. There were a lot of people who got played, a lot of presidents who got played because of their egos and their simple-mindedness, like Harry Truman, like uh, Eisenhower. They were simple-minded. Lyndon B. Johnson, simple-minded. So they were easily easy to control. The ones that weren't, well, you saw what happened to them. Now I want to tell you all really quick about Assad. Assad was actually well educated. He is, he was, you know, obviously born in Syria, but he worked as a doctor. Went and got his postgraduate at Western Eye Hospital in London, specializing in ophthalmology. 1994, his older brother died in a car crash, and he was recalled back to Syria because it's, it was about his time to take over. Because he, um, he was also like, he was like, I don't want to say a commander, but he was active in the military from a strategic side as well. Assad was, elect, Assad was elected as president, succeeding his father who died uh, in office a month prior. And then he started opposing the West. The West started opposing his his uh, government. Excuse me, his his um, authority. They said that he didn't actually when they called it a sham. But usually, if you're if you're a person who is actively against the West, it's pretty easy to 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 win. That's why Fidel Castro is kind of is still loved in Cuba. The Assad government, once again, just like all the other governments, declared itself as secular. Once seen by the international community as a potential reformer, the United States, the EU, and the majority of the Arab League call for Assad's resignation from the presidency. God forbid anybody ever call for our resignation of our presidency. All of a sudden, the Syrian war started. Ec economic sanctions started, and and you know, once again, they tried to nationalize their oil supply, and they wanted to be free from free from uh from Western control and imperialist control, and so we end up back. In the exact same scenario that we were in with all... I mean, because I just gave you three examples, people. They don't stop there. But my point is, they fear monger. 
they they use three tactics, right? So first, they race. It started with racism, because then you were okay with you know anybody being slaves. Then it started with religion, and they use religion to justify racism and slavery, and you don't question it. Then they use propaganda, which causes fear. Then they dehumanize them. You know, you don't think about those people in Africa because that's just normal. The violence we see in Africa is normal. The violence we see in Syria is normal. It's only normal because we're there. They always try to play it off. You know what they always say? What do they say? That region in the Middle East has been in tor- turmoil forever. People, hey, to break to see y'all, but so is Western Europe and so is the U.S., So was Eastern Europe. War was kind of a normal thing back then. Unfortunately, it's becoming normal again. But I hope that this makes you all reevaluate what you've learned, how you've been indoctrinated. You always say, well, it's liberal indoctrination. You came out the womb a quote unquote Christian maybe I don't know maybe you're a different religion but you came out the womb a Christian you just woke up one day and you're conservative and some of you borderline racist you think you just woke up one day like that no it's called indoctrination think about that thank you all so much for watching and always remember as usual find your balance peace